where we'll now perform another component space analysis for a linear transformation on the space of polynomials, the derivative operator. Now we have analyzed the derivative operator before without the help of component spaces, and we concluded that there is only a single eigenfunction in the constant polynomial, and that the corresponding eigenvalue is zero, and there are no either eigenfunctions or eigenvalues. But of course that raises an interesting question. For what reason are there no either eigenvalues? Is it because there are some complex eigenvalues and we don't see them as real eigenvalues? Or is it because this transformation is defective? In other words, zero has a high multiplicity, a high algebraic multiplicity, and lacks geometric multiplicity. So let's see which situation it is. The component space will help us clarify that. So once again, we'll choose this simple basis, and it's good for our purposes once again. And let's construct the matrix that represents the derivative with respect to this basis. Again, a column at a time, perform the transformation on each of the elements of the basis. One goes to zero, the zero polynomial, and the components of the zero polynomial with respect to this basis, or any other basis for that matter, are all zeros. So that's the first column. For the second column, transform the second element of the basis, and of course it's the constant polynomial 1, and decomposing 1 with respect to the same basis gives us coefficients 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And moving on to the last one, x squared, of course becomes 2x, so it's 0, 2, 0, 0, 2, 0. And we're done with this task. And of course, you'll see exactly what would happen if we went up in the polynomial order and considered cubic or fourth order polynomials. Right? We would continue with natural numbers on this off diagonal. It would be 1, 2, the next number would be 3, 4, and so forth. So these numbers are not on the diagonal. They're one position off the diagonal, which of course is the reason for everything that we'll see with this linear transformation. All right, now, what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix? Well, this matrix can be considered as an upper triangular matrix. So all of its eigenvalues are on the diagonal. So of course, they're all zero. So the triple eigenvalue is zero. So this strongly suggests that this matrix is defective. And of course it is, because as you can see, there is only one eigenvector to go around. So proceeding with the eigenvalue procedure, subtract zero from the diagonal, does nothing, and determine the null space of this matrix. And of course, it's one dimensional. So there's only a single eigenvector, and it equals one, zero, zero. And these are the components of the only eigenfunction of this transformation, which of course is P1 of X. So let's call this V1, the only eigenvector and the only corresponding eigenfunction is 1, and the rest are not available. So this transformation is defective. So the component space was once again useful. We did not know that this is actually the structure of this operator, and now we know that, thanks to the component space. So just one word about the uh, operator itself. And when you consider an operator in its spectrum, it's not only the operator, but the space on which you consider it. And of course, this is a much nicer operator if you broaden your scope of functions. For instance, if you considered all possible functions, then there would be, then any number would serve as an eigenvalue with e to that number x, the corresponding eigenfunction. So once again, it's not just the operator, but the space on which you consider it. But on the space of polynomials, the derivative operator is defective. And zero is the eigenvalue whose algebraic multiplicity equals the dimension of the space. And it lacks all but one eigenvector. So the multiplicity on an n-dimensional space of polynomials, the multiplicity of this operator is n. And the defect equals n minus 1, all but one dimension. I'm missing from the eigenspace. There is a single eigenvector, and that's the constant operator. And once again, I'd like to leave you with an exercise, which is to consider the second derivative operator with respect to this basis. And I think 
it would be more interesting to go to the space of fourth order or fifth order polynomials because on the third order on quadratic polynomials there'll be almost nothing left in the resulting matrix. All right, there we go. Yet one more linear transformation, a clarified with the help of component spaces.